When you read the Bible, you see from the first page to the last, light is used as a metaphor. And God said, let there be light. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is the light. The idea of light is used to help us understand God's presence, His power, and His provision. The Lord wraps Himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. His brightness was like the light, rays flash from His hand. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. The prophet Isaiah foretold of a day he would never see. A day when the light of God would pierce the darkness of the night sky and announce the coming of God's Son. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he described himself as the promised light, offering us hope and salvation. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus is the light not just for you and not just for me, but he is the light for the entire world. Celebrating his birth at Christmas is not merely a commemorative event or anniversary, but a yearly opportunity for us to open ourselves to the light of the world. That light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot put it out. The love of heaven has come to earth. The call of Christ begins in the cry of a baby. As we light this candle, may it light our way. Merry Christmas Eve, Venice Church. Let's all stand. So glad that you're here. Let's sing to the one, to the light of the world. Come on, let's sing together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mine and so much strong?
God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that had been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. That light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. All right, good morning. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was from the gospel of John. And uh, John was Jesus' friend. He walked with Jesus for three years. 
he fished with him, he ate with him, he prayed with him, he saw his friend Jesus die the most horrific death imaginable to man. So John knows that there is no darkness that can hold Jesus down because he also saw him rise from the dead. No darkness in Jesus. So John is telling us this, and uh, you can take notes if you want. There, I think we have them on the screen too, is that Jesus is the light of the world. That's what he's saying. And that's what we're going to be looking at a little bit tonight. How many of you enjoy, you, you, honestly, you love this kind of, this time of the year, this season, you dig the lights. You like the lights. I can't see you right now, but I'm assuming you do like the lights. If you don't like the lights, I don't understand you because the lights, that's festive, festive. I, uh, uh, Christmas home decorators, raise your hand. No. How many of you used to, you just got tired of doing it over the years, right? Now you just go to Home Depot and buy one of those machines that just, you know, goes back and forth with lights. I was looking at some of the lights uh, for houses that win awards and stuff like that and the work that they put into it. This one here is in Denver, Colorado. Isn't that, isn't that something? Dang. This, this one, pretty impressive from Wichita, Kansas. The resolution's not that impressive, but the house is impressive, that's for sure. There's also right here in our backyard of Santa Clarita, the homes along the Wakefield Court. That's fun. How many, you go there, you can just take the kids, not that far of a drive. Or I, I, think, I think this is the most impressive one right here. Um, no, not him, his neighbor. That's just great, man. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> yeah, like him. <laughs> uh, lights at Christmas, uh, they are decorative, they're fun, but they're also symbolic. There's two kinds of lights and two kinds of darkness. There's a physical light and a uh, spiritual light. There's a physical darkness and a spiritual darkness. Physical darkness happens just whenever there's an absence of light. And spiritual darkness is something that we're all born into in this world, in this broken world. We see the effects of spiritual darkness and violence in in the atrocities of war, in the abuse of power, in refugees fleeing oppression and disease In death, we see this spiritual darkness. It's all around us. And just as there are two kinds of darkness, a physical darkness and a spiritual darkness, there's also two kinds of light. A physical light that that pushes away the darkness that brings light. It's the light of the sun that makes things grow and sustains life. That's the physical light. And the Bible also talks about a spiritual light. And just as physical light brings life and health, spiritual light, the light that Christ Jesus brings, he brings health, he brings healing, he brings new life to people. Two kinds of light. The Christmas that I want to look at uh, is the first one, and it really just encapsulates what did Jesus come for? We're going to break it down real easy. What did he come for? the light of the world. How, why did he come here? And I'm going to do this using three different words and three statements. So the first one is this. Jesus came to illustrate what God is like, to illustrate what God is like, to show a picture of what God is like. Uh, how many you guys, uh, when you get together with your family at Christmas time, you play games? But you play games? A lot of people. Card games, there's all kinds of games. Uh, does anybody still play uh, Pictionary? Is that a thing anymore? No? Shoots and ladders? Jenga? Is it, did I say it right? I'm looking for the kids to tell me. The most popular game that there is over time that people play when they get together with their families is charades. 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 Anybody, any, any charade players out there? Yes. Yes? Uh, keep your hand up. Yeah? Are you pretty good? Anybody want to come up here? 
I need a, 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 a Sue. Yeah, I saw you with your hand raised. You ready to try? Come on. Sue's new around here too, so we're going to put her on the spot because that's how we treat our guests. Put them on the spot. I'm kidding. Come on. <laughs> this is awesome. Yes. Right? Yes, sure. Okay, so Sue's going Sue's gonna to act out. She doesn't know this. We haven't talked to her anything. She's going to act out. I think she had decided that this was going to be her church home until now. This is... <laughs> Let's do this one first. These are, these are, you guys are going to guess. If you guess it, you, you yell it out. Uh, they're Christmas movies. So that, there's that. You don't have to go through the whole D, 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 three. You, this one is four syllables. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. And to them, <laughs> go. Give it up. That's some acting right there. Wait, try another one. That was awesome. Another Christmas movie. Woo! Give her a hand. Especially the Wonderful Life one. That was, that was, I don't understand though what this had to do with, didn't quite get that. So, but Grinch, you illustrated really well, so that was good. The details of the Christmas story in Scripture give us an important picture of what God is like. Jesus wasn't born, as we know, into a palace. He was born into a lowly manger. It says in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 12, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. So, look, if you're making up a religious story or a religion, and you're coming up with an origin story or something. This is not how you would illustrate the birth of a savior or the birth of a king. You'd, you'd create a picture of them being born in a palace. In a palace, not a, not a barn. In a palace. That's what would be expected. But God does so often what is unexpected. Jesus is born and placed in a manger, in a trough, a place where cows would eat and animals would eat. It's something you'd put hay in for animals to eat from, and he chose. It didn't just happen that way. It was chosen to identify that way. It's important because God reveals something in this that showcases a little bit of how he works. He is willing to show up in places that are very unexpected, and he shows up for people you couldn't imagine him showing up for. That's God. He's not religious. Religion is something man-made. God shows up in unexpected places for people you wouldn't imagine. He did it then, and he did it, did it, does it still today. He's there for the poor, the forgotten. He shows up in our pain. He shows up uh, with healing. He shows up with peace instead of our confusion. And Christmas is really a celebration of that. Jesus came as a light of the world to uh, illustrate this and to show us what God is like. And he gave the clearest picture of what God is really like. In fact, he said in John 14, 9, if anyone who has seen me, you have also seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So he's saying, if you want to know, somebody wants to know, what is God like? Well, then what we do is we look at Jesus. We look at what he did. We look at what he said. We look at uh, how he loved. He ate with the outcasts. This is Jesus he ate with the outcasts. He forgave whoever asked. He healed the sick. He invited both the scoundrels that were tax collectors and the religious zealots to be his followers. He came for everyone. And God wants all people to experience the love of God at Christmas. He came to illustrate. Here's another thing he came to do. Illuminate. 
illuminate our way to God. Get it lit up. I was remembering this last week. At one point during this last year, Marianne and I were on a trip, and we were in a bunch of different hotels for nights in a row. And there was one night that uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, uh, as I do, and was trying to get to the restroom. But we had those blackout curtains in this room. And I, I don't know, you may have them in your room, but these were strong blackout curtains. And I couldn't see anything, not my hand. And I got out and I start walking because are, are you, are you kind of dumb when you wake up at three o'clock in the morning? I'm just out of it. So I start walking and I just walk, bam, right into a wall. And then I'm like, and then it, it dawns on me, oh, shoot, I'm in a hotel room. And I can't remember what the room looked like because I'd been in so many. And I'm just, I'm, I'm scurrying around. I'm opening doors. It's not the right doors. I can't find light switches. I'm, I'm frustrated, but it gets so bad that I'm like, I'm laughing because I'm like, this is crazy. I really, I don't even know how to get back to the bed. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just wandering in the dark here. And finally, I made it back to the bed, and, and I wanted to make sure I, I didn't even know if I was on the right side, so I'm, you know, and I was, and so then I, I get next to the bed, because I always have my phone next to me, I know that, and get and grab my phone and hit the light and find my way through the darkness to the baño. So this is what light does. Light illuminates. It makes things hidden, seen. And it shows you a path. We need that in life, especially when we're going through times that are unnavigated, haven't been through it before. We're facing some darkness or some things that are testing us. We need the light of the world to be with us. Look at this passage right here. Uh, it illustrates this, Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where's the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshiped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We just wrapped up a series talking about the significance of those gifts. But these magi were looking for the king of the Jews, and it reveals a deep spiritual longing that they would have. These men were from the east, very likely from the same region where the people of God had been exiled about 500 years ago. If you're familiar with the Bible, you might remember like the story of Daniel and the Hebrew children and King Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon. This would have been a place where these kind of magi were from. These guys were probably... Very familiar. It had been about 500 years earlier when Daniel was there, but these astrologers and magi and advisors to the king would have heard stories about Daniel, would have heard stories about a Jewish exile, would have known stories about this Messiah, this Savior of the world who would come to the earth. And so these guys were likely in that elite class of Eastern astrologers. So they had enough interest in them and believed in what this star represented that they would travel approximately around 900 miles to go to get to this place. Remember we were talking a couple of weeks ago that the, the religious Pharisees were only about you know, six miles away. They didn't even bother going and checking it out. But you've got these guys who are star readers, pagan, non-Jewish, pagan star readers, and they make a journey of 900 miles because there's spiritual hunger. They fell down and they worshiped him. Listen, if you, again, were making up a religious story, this wouldn't be the people that you would write into the story. You'd have Jewish high priests and kings and queens and princes and nobility and royalty and all that. that. But here... The Jewish, the Savior is born. It's not the Jewish worship, uh, the, the Jewish priests that come to worship him, but it's these, again, foreign Jewish astrologers. And they're a part of the story, I believe, to remind us that Jesus came to illuminate the way to God for all people. And you say all people. All people. 
For all people. It's not the us and them or this kind of person ends up. For every human being. Every human being belongs to God. They may not be living in that. They may reject that. You still belong with them. And everyone you know belongs with him. Jesus wants to illuminate the path for you too in order to know God's love and grace. And then I want you to look at what Jesus said about himself and those who would follow him. John 8, he said, Jesus again he spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the great light of the world who promises to never leave us, friends, to never forsake us. If you're experiencing any darkness in your life right now, trust Jesus to guide you through it. Trust Jesus to illuminate a path to get through that thing and get towards him. If you're in the darkness, there's people right now in the darkness of grief, darkness of fear, darkness of depression, Got people fooled, maybe, but there's darkness, and it hurts, and there's pain, whatever it is. Jesus is the great light of the world, leading us home to God. He wants to light a path that brings people back to Abba, back to Father. Now, as the team plays this next song, it's titled Light of the World, and I want to invite you to stay seated and just consider if there's a place in your life where the light needs to shine. If there's any darkness where the light needs to come in. Enjoy this. i 
beautiful. Thank you very much. So I want to give you one more thing that Jesus came to do before we go into uh, the candle lighting portion of the service. Um, he came to illustrate. He came to illuminate, to show our way back to God, and Jesus came to initiate. Initiate the removal of darkness. Now notice initiate, because you might say, well, if Jesus is the light of the world, he came to overcome darkness, why is there still so much darkness around us? Because we sure see it, don't we? It's, 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 it's there. I think we can acknowledge that. My answer is this, because there are two advents. Advent simply means coming. There are two advents that we're going to experience. The first one, the first advent, is what we're celebrating right now, Christmas, the come, the advent of Christ, the coming, the first coming of Christ. And in his first coming and death on a cross and the resurrection from the grave, he made a way for spiritual darkness to be removed from every life that would choose to believe and follow him. That he's greater than that. His love is greater than the sin he made. He came to remove the spiritual darkness from every life. John 12, 46 says, I have come as light into the world that whoever, just say whoever. That's you, that's me. That whoever believes in me would not stay in darkness. That's what the purpose of the first advent was, to remove spiritual darkness. And he's done it. He's already overcome it. Our part now is to believe and to receive that and to say yes and to follow him. His second coming, because there will be a second coming, that's the second advent, will be to remove darkness from the world. That hasn't happened yet. He will redeem and he will restore all things. In scripture, this is called a new heaven and a new earth and all sin, all selfishness, all disease and death and darkness in this world will be removed forever. But until the second advent comes, Jesus invites his people, his church, to join in the mission of being a light in the world and pushing back the spiritual darkness. That's our invitation as followers in the church, not to just, you know, wait for him to come and to make things all glorious. He says, no, right now, it's up to you guys. I'm the head, you're the body, let's, let's move. Let's bring light into places where there is darkness. I'm gonna invite you to go ahead and get your candles out right now. You got your candles? If you're under 27, you need the glow stick. Just kidding. Parents, please. <laughs> Use wisdom. The carpet is new. <laughs> Jesus invites his followers to be filled with his light, his spirit. Don't, don't light them yet. Did, don't, did you did, did see? The, we haven't lit them yet, so hold on. Hide them for a second. If they're lit, hide them. Don't let anybody see your special treat there. He invites us. Hear how Jesus said it. He said, you are the light of the world. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. That's what he's saying right there. He's got, he is the only true light. This is representative of the light of Christ. But then he said, he goes, I'm the light of the world that came into the world to take away darkness from man. But then he turns and he says, now you... You are light. Now go and spread it to other people. Don't just keep it in one part. Remember he said, don't put a, a, a lampshade over the thing. Don't, don't bury it. Make sure that your light is having an impact on other people's lives. I'd like you to bow your heads with me before we go further, would you? <clears throat> there may be some places in your life right now where you're like, you know what? I need to make that decision for Jesus Christ. So before we do that, before we share light with one another, if you are here and you say, I need to believe in Jesus, let him remove spiritual darkness inside of you, why not? I'm going to give you a moment to acknowledge that. If that's you and you want to say yes to Jesus in his life, in your life, just pray this prayer with me. Just, just be in agreement with it if that's you, that Lord, we say yes to you. God, we say yes to your light filling us, God. 
Lead us out of darkness, which involves fear and shame and all of that, Lord. We want to give our hearts and our lives to you. So I pray that you'd come and be my light. Tell them that. Be my light. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The team is going to uh, sing and lead us in O Holy Night. And uh, I've got a couple helpers who are going to come help and walk down the aisles in just a second. And, and they're going to walk down the aisles and they're going to light at the end and you're going to pass that light. Can I tell you a little secret about it? You ever been in one of these things? The, uh, the, because they're, they, they burn and it's wax and wax will drip. So here's the, here's the secret. It's so clever. If you are needing your candle to be lit, you bend your candle and get it in the light. The person who has the light, you stay straight. You stay straight. You let them come to you and get light. Okay, cool. All right. Very good. This is us. We're going to come here. All right, girls, thank you. Come on up here, would you? Very good. Thanks for your help tonight. We get our light from Christ Jesus, and then we pass it on. And then we just keep passing it on. Let's do that tonight as the band leads us in a wonderful, tender song.
Dang, that was good. Oh, night divine. We're going to uh, go ahead and look around. Isn't that a pretty sight? I love that sight. Think about that. We all, we all live in different communities and apartment complexes, go to different schools or work different jobs. But we have light in us. Now, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and uh, blow it, blow this out carefully. There we go. Stay. Hold, hold it. Hold it. Blow it out. And then hold on to that because we're going to let this harden for just for a minute before we, <laughs> before we set that down. You know that the, 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 so don't set it down yet. You know what the scripture says? The scripture says that one day when the new heaven and new earth comes, Revelation chapter 21, when darkness is removed and we're at home with God, there will be no need for the sun. For the glory of the God will be our light. The whole world. Until that day, let us, as people of light, people touched by the light of the world, share that light with others. That's what we're called to do. May 2023 be a year where that happens. Everybody activated, sharing what you have with others, bringing that love. All right. Now, you can go ahead and take that. Uh, stay standing, but go ahead and put that in the cup holder in front of you. See, we got this planned out. Put that in the cup holder right there. That's good. You can go ahead and uh, just stay standing. We're going to dismiss you, but there's just a couple things I wanted to say. And then we're going to uh, close with a wonderful song, Joy to the World, and share that. So one is one of the ways that we shine the light around here. In fact, it's the way I'm probably most proud of that we do every year is our Christmas offering. And unashamedly, I ask people, give to it. Do it. Because it, it, uh, we had a, between our collective churches, our nine locations and 14 congregations, we put a pretty uh, ambitious goal of $605,000 to raise so that we can, this coming 2023, just use all of that and go forward fund the mission uh, to, uh, and you know what we support if you're around here, our orphanage in Uganda, 500 kids and our home for victims of sex trafficking, our wells that we build, our, our homes that we build in Baja, uh, the disaster relief that we do, all these different things that we're able to do because of the Christmas offering that happens the year prior. So I want to encourage you. We're, we're about a little over halfway there and uh, that you would pray and ask God, can I be a part? We're so wealthy over here in this side of the world. Just say, can I be a part in some way? And I promise you, it's money well spent. It really is. So God bless you as you consider that. The other thing is tomorrow is what? Oh, my, yes, it is. And it lands on what day? Sunday, Sunday football. <laughs> the only team worth watching already played today. You know that. Come on now. There will not be a service here. This is our Christmas service. So we'll be online for a lot of our folks who watch it. We're glad you're watching online. We love that. And then next Sunday, the first, we do this every year, the Sunday following Christmas, is our Thank You Sunday. Because it takes a whole lot of volunteers to do what we do and collectively across our community church movement and right here in Venice. And so we say, thank you, take that day, go be with your family. So for the next two Sundays, this tomorrow and the next week, if you show up, it's just you and Jesus. So you have fun, but we want you to be with your family and do that. And then we'll be back on the 8th. We're starting a brand new series. I can't wait for this one. It's called The Ways of Jesus. We are deep diving into how Jesus called us to live. In 2023 is going to be life-changing for a lot of people, I believe. that I'm expecting things in my own life, too. So you're standing, ready to sing joy to the world? Let's do that, and, uh, and then the band's going to dismiss you. But let's stay and sing this song together. God bless you all.
Christmas, we will see you in the new year. Go in peace.